good to see everybody this evening. <clears throat> I know that traditionally story time is out at the farm, but <clears throat> you know that's not our only story. And we got Hurricane Laura coming through, so it's like torrential downpour and uh, between work and Arkansas and everything else, uh, it's been uh, time has been very short lately. <clears throat> but I thought we would share a few things. Um, this is Susan, my wife, and <clears throat> coming up very shortly on the 5th of September, we will have been married 27 years. Do you have anything you would like to add about that? I'm not sure it's been that long. <laughs> oh, well, that's a compliment. Thank you very much. <laughs> All not, right. No, I'm not that old. <laughs> not that old. Okay. <laughs> But we have a picture up here on the wall, I don't know if you can see it. This is a, a, a survey picture of the, our farm back here on the back that we had. I framed it after we got our survey and stuff done. But we're sitting here uh, in our house and um, I thought that it would be fun to tell Susan's story. Because, you know, I tell a lot of stories about veterinary medicine, but and farming in my life, but I mean, right here sets, you know, 80% of my life. I mean, we do everything together. We always have. And so <clears throat> I would like to um, introduce Miss Susan and tell you a little bit more about her. And also, I'd like to make fun of her this evening. <laughs> Yay! So I, ha I have some questions that I'd like uh, to ask Susan. We're gonna have a little fun with this and then <clears throat> Miss Susan, are you ready? I guess. I have always dreamed of having a farm and being a farmer. For, that has always been my top goal in life. I gave up on that goal many many years ago. I just did not think that financially as well as um, time-wise, as well as just availability, that I was ever going to get to a point in my life where the Lord would bless me with a farm. I basically just gave up on that. We had uh, about two acres here on our house, and I had all sorts of visions about doing that stuff, but I always wanted to have a farm. And so when I met Susan, I knew that she loved animals. I mean, just absolutely nuts over animals and crazy. Even started out at Auburn in pre-veterinary medicine. But my question to you, and I don't know the answer to this question, but have you always wanted to have a farm? Not the same kind of farm that you've always had in mind. Well, what kind of farm did uh, you have in mind? A horse farm. A horse farm. Just horses, that's all? Well, than anything else that I decided to bring home. <laughs> well, isn't that kind of the farm that we have right now? Except you do hay and stuff. I, I didn't want to do hay. You didn't want to do harvest hay? Yeah, I just want to go out and play with the animals. Okay. Well, you pretty much do that. I do that. Yeah. I let you have that part, your part of the farm, and so, I play with the animals. You just wanted a place where you could play with animals. Yeah, and big animals. animals and horses and stuff. <laughs> Did you ever have a picture in your mind of how big of a place that you wanted? No. No? Not really. And um, just, did you ever have like a, a vision of what it was that you wanted besides a horse farm? Besides a horse farm? No, the horses okay. were pretty much the center. Pretty much it. <laughs> <yeah, the plate. laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> I've always wanted to have a, a, a farm and, and the species that I've always wanted to fool with was cattle and sheep. And sheep definitely were the top even before cattle. I've just always enjoyed working with small ruminants and they're just so dang adorable. And dumb. They are very dumb. <laughs> <clears throat> Not that your horses are all intelligent, but <clears throat> the my sheep are pretty dumb. I give you that. Uh, but but so you've always envisioned having a farm, a horse farm and stuff. Did you ever have any visions of like what you would do with your horse farm? 
ride the horses. <laughs> That's it? You know, like dressage or show circuit or breeding farm or um, become an international horse racer or anything like that? Or did you just want pet horses? I want to just ride my horses around and have fun. So, I kind of always thought that somewhere in life I would probably end up back in Kentucky. We moved to Arkansas, uh, my first job, and I really like the state of Arkansas, and there's tons of farmland there, of course. And so after we moved out of uh, Auburn, we went to there, and we lived there for three years. Um, and I, you know, was afforded this opportunity to <laughs> move back. <laughs> Oops. Lighting function, uh, it's on a timer. When you have children, you'll want to put your lights on a timer because they go to bed or they leave and they never turn the lights off. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so I always kind of knew that we would end up back in Kentucky. Did you have a place in the world that you thought you would end up having your horse farm? A state that you always thought you would be at? Well, I never really thought I'd leave California. Never thought you'd leave California? This is not California. Nope. <laughs> and I'm glad that she brought that up. Because Miss Susan not only grew up in California, but she uh, went to Cotillion, and she was raised by some very proper parents that spoke proper English. She has a <laughs> master's in English, and very educated. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> she also was uh, raised in, in North Little Rock, Arkansas, and, and so uh, city life has always kind of been uh, your mainstay, wouldn't you say? Much more crowded than rural say. Laurel County, Kentucky. Well, in places, I mean, definitely, I mean, I don't know. It's, I don't know, California is a really big state, yeah, yeah I get that. And you drive, we drove an hour to the snow in the mountains and an hour to the beach and half an hour to the desert. And That's true. I yeah. mean, it was all, you kind of had your choice of where you wanted to be, but how close to people you wanted to be. But, you, but I think you can say fairly, though, that culturally, Kentucky is much different than those other places you lived. Yes. Culturally, it was kind of, I moved her here, and culturally, you found a few things to be a little bit shocking. And humorous, would you say? <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> so I brought a few of those things with me. Oh, you you mean you left them other times? <laughs> I just didn't want to you, forget you any. You got a big list. I do have That's a list. That's a really long, long. So I thought list. I thought it would be awesome if if you would read these one at a time and then <laughs> comment and on then them. laugh. <laughs> and then comment on them. Oh, it's not as long as I thought it was. So, there you go. I just put I just put nine of them on there, and if I think of some more all, all along the way. <clears throat> but um, go ahead. I, I'll let you read. Do, do I get to correct your spelling and you grammar can, and punctuation? Correct stuff? whatever you want to correct. <laughs> cringe items. Oh, I see. Okay. Cringe items. These are things that make Susan cringe. So <laughs> or. <laughs> She did that today. She Mrs. said, I'm having a seizure. I said, no, that's more like uh, Michael Jackson's dancers on Thriller. Thriller! <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty bad. So, so these, these are quotes. These are all things that someone, probably you, has said. That was <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Read these. Okay, so uh, number one, <laughs> I came around the barn and my little sheep attacked me. That little fart and a half. <laughs> where'd the other half come from? And where'd the other half go? <laughs> <clears throat> you did. 
<laughs> you never became accustomed to the term fart and a half. No. <laughs> what, what's a half a fart? I mean, they're just either long or short, right? <laughs> so, I, I mean, like, you just, like, let half of it out and then let the rest out later? I mean, I mean how do you know it's a half Well, during that great. <laughs> well, during that great. Why are we talking about farts? <laughs> During all that great excitement and exertion, you got to save something for later. No, you don't. If you've already made everyone smell something that they never ever wanted to smell in their entire lives, why would you make them smell more of it later just because so, you don't feel like getting rid of it all? It's, it's, not, it's not that you haven't heard this term before because you've been in Kentucky for a while, but the other day... I was describing to her about how this sheep headbutted me and, and all this kind of stuff. And I said, he's a little fart and a half. And she just like went into like paralysis mode. <laughs> I probably did make that face. <laughs> and, you know, I, I just keep walking on. And going on. <laughs> I turn around and she's still frozen. I was like, what? I don't understand what a fart and a half is. <laughs> I can't have a fart. I still don't understand. Oh, well. It's like saying you have half a cloud. Half a cloud? Yeah. <laughs> it's either a big cloud or a little cloud. You don't have a big cloud and then half a cloud. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <clears throat> there can only be one McCloud. <laughs> no, with half. You can have half your head, but you can't have all of it. So I win. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Number two, let's see. <laughs> I can't even say this one. Why not? It does. It's not real. It's untelling what she'll do. <laughs> so does someone tell it and then untell it, and so it never would never happened? It's kind of like how does that work? It's kind of like unsweet tea. <laughs> you go and you order unsweet tea, and I'm like. <clears throat> Did they sweeten and then take the sugar back out? Why don't you just order tea or sweet tea? But you can't. you got to order unsweet tea. That's because you're in Kentucky. So, it's untelling. Why not to order unsweet tea? Ouch. Oh, my brain. She's so sensitive to the word untelling <laughs> that people will come in and I'll say, so, how long has your dog been sick? Oh, it's untelling. And she'll immediately go into that seizure mode. <laughs> drives me crazy. Or she'll be writing and she'll be talking to somebody on the phone. And you'll, she'll hear over here, the con, I don't know, it's untelling. And she'll just go. <laughs> oh, the light. Start smiling again. There it goes. <laughs> I don't know where the wave baton is. <clears throat> That's weird that. Faith sits it's up in the middle I know, of the bed crazy. in the middle of the night to wave her arms <laughs> yeah. so she can finish her book. <laughs> we need to set it on longer timer. I can't. <clears throat> so it, it's untelling how long it's been Don't that way. <laughs> you hurt me. Oh, you hurt me. Number three. <laughs> oh, by the way, it's supposed to be there's no telling, as in no one can tell. There's no telling. There you go. So no one can tell. Always say it with that voice, too. Thank okay. you. No. Number three. No. <laughs> poor Wilma. Poor, poor Wilma. I hear Wilma caught the sugars. <laughs> and they came out of that unsweet tea. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> when you let the sugars go, they make sweet tea. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> I can't tell you how many times we've heard people <laughs> say, no Oh, you need to pray for me. Minute. I caught the sugars. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> they got diabetes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they got diabetes. <laughs> Catch the sugars. <laughs> Let them go. You Let actually go. develop 
<coughs> the sugars. <laughs> Yeah, now this this was early. This was back in 1994-ish. <laughs> oh, I know. I remember I this one. Because <laughs> you said, honey, I'm headed to town for some soap and powders. I said, you're, you're doing what? <laughs> going for some soap and powders. I'm what gonna is go soap and powders? <laughs> I'm going to the store to get some soap and powders. <laughs> She ran saying? back. She ran back out the trailer. What? <laughs> so we don't need soap and powder. What are you talking about? Soap and powders. What soap and powders? What kind of powders? It's the kind you dip out of a box and you wash your laundry and stuff. It's the laundry detergent. <laughs> yeah. Soap, soap and powders. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea what that was. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I would have said we were sitting in the oh. office the other day, and I was talking to one of my clients, and uh, <clears throat> she said, "Yeah, I went to the store and got me some dishwashing liquid, and I got some soap and powders." <laughs> I said, "I gotta go write that down." <laughs> <laughs> Memories. Yeah, so I've known what soap and powders were for a while now, but. I sure didn't before I met you. <laughs> Cultural exchange. Yes, thank you for sharing. I have no idea what number we're on. Uh, we're on number five. But number I five. I don't even know what this means. Get out the fire? Is that what you meant to write? Yeah, get out of the fire. <laughs> oh, that's supposed to be an A. Get out of the fire? Sorry. Okay. Yes. Spelling here. <laughs> okay, spelling. <laughs> Correct that on the next edition of this list. <laughs> Don't you know if you play in the fire, you'll wet the bed? No, goofball. It's, don't you know if you play in the fire, you'll wet the bed? <laughs> well, you better pay closer to home. <laughs> yes, if you play too far away, you'll wet the bed. What does that even mean? I Why have no idea. I've heard it all my life. <laughs> we, we would go camping or we'd have... A uh, stove in the living room, or whatever in the winter, or what it don't matter. Campfire. We, we'd even roast marshmallows, you know, out on the grill. But we, as kids, we tried to burn something. <laughs> and Grandma and Grandpa always say, "If you don't stop playing in the bar, you'll wet the bed." <laughs> I don't know what that means, but well, you know, we say it all the time, and it worked because we quit playing in the. I may, I may get this wrong. <laughs> So, mom will have to correct me if I do, but whistle in the kitchen, no, sing in the kitchen and whistle in bed and you'll see the devil before you're dead. I think that's how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> so I take, that, I take it that that's something like you're playing in the fire and wet in the bed. Thing. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that you had a little incantation in you. Um, no, Grandma said that to me too. Is that what it was, sing in the kitchen and whistle in... It was sing at the table. Sing at the sing table, table whistle and, and whistle and bed. That's right, because children are not supposed to make noise at the table, you know. And oh. they're definitely not supposed to whistle in the bed. Don't whistle in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> so can you imagine you was playing in the far, and then all of a sudden you started singing about it at the table. I was playing in the far one day, and then you got in trouble for that. And then you went to bed, wet the bed, and you got up and went... <laughs> oh man, I'm ruined! I'm gonna see the devil! Quite All in one day! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that devil's gonna get you bad. <laughs> okay, so I have no idea where that saying may have come from. But I, don't, I don't know either, but. <clears throat> number six. That was a bad piece of steak. I think I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> vomit? Really? Vomit? I hear it all the time. Vomit? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I don't even bother finishing the word. I just yeah. <laughs> don't make me vom. Yeah. <laughs> vomit? Vomit? <laughs> I love it when people say I'm going to vomit. Ew, why would you even? <laughs> no, don't even tell someone. 
Unless it's your doctor. Yeah. I've been vomiting all night. <laughs> <laughs> you got me vomic medicine. Well, as I, as, you know, as a doctor, you have people who come in who <laughs> say, my dog's been regurgitating. <laughs> and I'm like, that's what a bird does to feed it. You know? <laughs> but, okay, it's been regurgitating. And then they'll have, it's been throwing up all night. Well, okay, I get that. And then the ones come in. He's vomiting and vomiting all over me house. <laughs> it all means the same thing. I don't know. I think I've been in the room when you've gotten a You never knew I was multi-lingual. Never had a vomiker. There's another one. I throwed my hands up. You said throwed. Throwed my hands up. You said throwed all the time. We ain't the number 10, yes. That makes me... Was that... That's because we don't have a number 10. He throwed his hands up. <laughs> he throwed his hands up and then his dog throwed up. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe his dog throwed up and he threw his hands up. He oh my, and my dog throwed up. <laughs> Is that good? What's number seven? <laughs> Throwed his hands up so he could find the mop and move up all the vomit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he oh vomit boy. in bed and he whistled accidentally. Oh boy, he's really going to see the devil <laughs> quick. That sounds like a movie. Exorcist. <laughs> now this this just sounds she like vomit in the bed on purpose. <laughs> like, okay. like I'm trying to be the hickiest person on the planet. What number are we on? Number seven. <laughs> number seven. Let's go down to the crick and catch crawdads. <laughs> That's not an exaggeration. Ah! <laughs> what? What number one, what? leave the crawdads alone. And number two, where in the world's a crick? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget when we first got married. We was here in Alabama and I told you, I said, I'm going to go down to the crick and fish. <laughs> Seizure moment. What's a crick? Is this I got a crick in my neck. I'm this like, I thought maybe you were hurt. You know, a crick. You know, C R E E K. Crick. <laughs> Pretty sure that's not how you pronounce crick. <laughs> well, that's how I pronounce it. And apparently, in four and a half million other people in Kentucky, probably. <laughs> I can't. I guess I can't argue with the local pronunciation. There you go. Now that I know that. that. This crick. <laughs> But leave the crawdads in it, please. We live in a holler. I'm not, eat, I'm not cooking up any crawdads for you. We live in a holler, and we cross the creek. <laughs> I was like, you live in a holler? Why doesn't everybody just be quiet? <laughs> they just yell and yell and yell. Why can't they get along? How come they call her Mall Bell? Because <laughs> she lives in a holler. <laughs> What? Why they call her Ma Bell? Oh, Ma Bell? <laughs> I thought you said Ma Mel. That's a city. Of course, that goes course. way back to the old uh, Southwestern Bell. Back when Southwestern Bell was Bell. a thing. When Bell was a thing. Before they made it. Oh, Bells. great! Now we just aged ourselves. Yeah. All right. Like Bell Monopoly. Yeah. <clears throat> you don't remember that. You're young. Remember? That's right. I just heard about it in you history. Just heard about it in history. History. Yeah. <laughs> What's number eight? Back when there were those rotary phones. Oh gosh, and those like, were awesome to play with. Well, I'll get you one of those new rotary cell phones they're coming out with. <clears throat> Alan has it. I'll be turning it like this. How cool is that? That's not dial. how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you remember how to use a rotary phone? The first time the phone had a switch so that if you got if you had a push button phone but your phone line didn't understand what the beeps meant there was a switch so you push the button that. and instead of going yeah. beep it would go I do remember <laughs> that we had one of those did we not we did that's correct. Yes, because our phone, like, well, I don't think You would did. dial it out and it would do the tone, and then you wait a second, and it would do all the clicks. No, you switched you it one or the other. Yeah. Depending on whether your phone line understood or not. That's true. Because... But there was both. New phone, your new phone line would understand. 
the no, jack. I, there, our, mine had one on the back. <clears throat> I think the one in Auburn that we had, actually, when you push the buttons, it would go, blah, 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 and then you wait and go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. I understand what you're saying now, yeah. but it didn't beep when you clicked them. It that's just right. like waited till you were done and then started. <laughs> Because it had to think about it. Because it's like, man, I gotta go back in time for a second here. That's a lot <laughs> of computing power. That's a lot of computing powder in the nineties, right there. Yeah. All right. What's next? Back when you, if you wanted to talk on the phone in the closet, you had to have a really long, really long cord. cord. That's right. <laughs> long cord. I have one of those really long cords. Okay. So number eight. We just talked about this one. There was a haint in that building. <laughs> Made me pee my pants. No, it didn't. There's a haint there. <laughs> Honey, I don't, I don't get it. Mary doesn't know what a haint is because she grew up with as my child. And I got we didn't the, have any haints around here. I got the most perfect mix of country and western regular. <laughs> 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 well, in Kentucky, a haint is a poltergeist or a ghost. Let's just leave them there. <laughs> Don't let the haints out of Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, well, probably not. Who in the world started calling them haints? I ain't got no idea. <laughs> well, in, in California, they must have been isn'ts <laughs> and wasn't. And the words. Oh <laughs> oh no, you got it wrong. It's isn't, wasn't, and horns. Where'd you grow up? The H was silent. <laughs> Just like the haint. <laughs> Wait, then it would be an ain't. So why is there all of a sudden an H there? Well, I don't know, but if you walk fast enough across a bunch of ain'ts, they pop. <laughs> Sorry, I buzz killed. <laughs> no, dark. ant went, kill. My kids always go, oh, that went dark fast. Yeah. Dad. Just, well, we went from ghosts to dead ants. I don't know which one's darker. <laughs> because you can't have a hank without a dead ant. Okay, number nine, finally. Okay. You're making me cry. I, this, this one isn't the one that... Okay, whatever. This this one isn't for me. This one's for somebody else. Okay. It, it's for Skylin. This is Skylin's. She likes this one. Okay. I think. I think it's Skylin. Well, Skylin, I think, is the one that said it. <laughs> you kind of looked at her funny and said, Oh, go write that down. <laughs> no, I thought she said she it cracked her up when you said it. Well, it could have been. <laughs> I have selective memory. I swear, if she does that again, I'm going ape. <laughs> See, that one I get. I totally understand what going ape is. Oh, there you go. It's like <clears throat> bananas going nuts. We see that all the time. We hear that all the time. I'm going to go ape. Out of your mouth. <laughs> I don't say it. Have you ever heard me say I was going ape? Well, you know, since I'm from Kentucky and... I say it, it's a Kentucky saying, right? Sure, why not? Why not? <laughs> what was I don't go ape. Her? Mary, what do you go? <laughs> what no. What? Wait, what did you if say? If you don't go ape, what do you do? <laughs> I'm going slightly mad. <laughs> <laughs> You're going slightly mad? I'm going slightly mad. Alright, now number ten. Song? Number it's ten funny. I left open for you because I thought maybe, and I know it's just off the top of your head, there's something that just jumps out and you think, man, I hate it when people say that or I can't. I don't hate it. I just totally this, didn't understand it, it the makes first you... time I answered the phone okay. and somebody asked if we clogged horses. 
<laughs> no, I'm sorry. You don't put <laughs> shoes on horses here. <laughs> and you were like, what? Yeah. I was like, yes, if we clog horses. And he's like, you mean Coggins? I was like, I don't know. He's the one who said it. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, you run a Coggins test on a horse. But a lot of people around here say, hey, do you clog them? <laughs> Can you clog my horse for me? I didn't know horses wore clogs. Probably could clog them if you Wouldn't give me a big enough bat. That, that would be. That's <laughs> clock. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you clock someone with a bank. You don't oh, you know. bat. You don't clog them with a bat. Well, the visual of you hitting a horse in the head with a bat is so funny. And of what it's going to do back with its four wooden shoes. You <laughs> <laughs> have a nice hoof print right in the middle of your forehead. <laughs> Why is it so hard to get heartburn? <laughs> is that a thing? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't know if that was a new Kentucky thing. Oh my goodness. You laugh heartburn. Anything else that you could think of? That you... <laughs> I don't know. How long is your cat? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> oh, totally different story. Yeah. I <clears throat> told that one. But, but anyway. Well, thank you, Miss Susan, for coming and <laughs> laughing with me this evening. I appreciate it. With? Huh? Oh. With at me. Oh. <laughs> English majors. We're awful. Yeah, we're awful. Defund the grammar police. Miss Mary, do you have one that you think is really funny before we say goodbye? Something that just jumps out? Mm. <clears throat> See, she grew up around here, so it's not as novel. That's true. It's not. She's heard it all and seen it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you what, I, I do have one more, though. I think is is. Uh, I, I thought about this this afternoon, and, and, and I'm not saying this is from Kentucky, but I, I will say that <laughs> people seem to be a whole lot more willing to use this saying. <clears throat> when um, Susan, who um, was pregnant with our fourth child, <laughs> it's been a while. got asked by one of my cousins... Now, mind you, <laughs> he hadn't <clears throat> been the only one. This is probably the 15,000th one, but <clears throat> when she was carrying Faithlin, he walked up to her and goes, Hey, don't you know what causes that? <laughs> and almost got a black eye. <laughs> she went, Hey, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> she, I about she, clogged him in the head. <laughs> she, Oh my gosh, she let him have it. Did I? Did yes, I say you something? did. If you say that again to me, I'm pregnant and I'm mad and I don't want to hear it. It doesn't sound like me, but I was pregnant, so <laughs> I could have been that way. Well, you said it in a nice way. Mary, do you remember that? I mean, you were like a whole two, one and a half years old. You remember me being pregnant and mad? I don't think. No, I had never seen you mad in my life. Yeah, I don't. Thanks. What are those eyeballs? <laughs> <laughs> You're like that little black cat clock where the <clears throat> tail swings and your eyes go on. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Anything else for Head and Well Farms? I don't know. Uh, Kentucky's not so much one that says it as Alabama was to say fixing to. Fixing to. No, I don't see that, that much. definitely an Alabama thing. That was an Alabama colloquialism. It was so much Is a, that the right word? Colloquialism? Yeah, that's a good, pretty, yeah. Well, thank you. She I, taught me that word. I bet the way you said it, you could almost spell it. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> fixing to was such a colloquialism down there that... Uh, there were English papers written about it and what it means <laughs> and how many different ways you can use it. Say fixing to. <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. True. All right. Well, we'll let our viewers go. Yeah, poor things. Uh, <laughs> let them go. They probably hung up on us go. a long time ago. So goodbye, Hidden Well Farms. We'll see you later.